what we have learned from our previous session that the three parts of brain are cerebrum, cerebellum and brainstem. So let me write it down. Three parts. Brain is broadly classified into three parts. They are cerebrum, cerebellum and brainstem. Now, number one is cerebrum, number two is cerebellum and number three is brainstem. Now, what are the three parts of brainstem? The three parts of brainstem are midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. We have already learned this. Now, I will be discussing about individual parts of the brain. First, I will be discussing about cerebrum. Then I will be discussing about cerebellum. And then I will be discussing about brainstem. Now, what is cerebrum? Cerebrum is the uppermost and largest part of the brain. So, first we will discuss about cerebrum. Cerebrum is the uppermost and largest part of the brain. So, cerebrum is the uppermost and largest part of the brain. It is the uppermost part and the largest part of the brain. Now, this cerebrum is highly developed part of the brain. So, it is most highly developed part of the brain. Now, this cerebrum, this cerebrum is divided into two halves. One is right half and another one is left half. If this is the cerebrum, it is divided into two halves. One is right half and another one is left half. And this right half and divide uh, and this right half and the left half are divided by a deep groove. This is a groove in between. So the cerebrum is divided into right and left halves by a deep groove. So we can write cerebrum is divided into right and left halves by a deep groove. Now, each half, that is the right half and the left half, each halves are called cerebral hemispheres. So, this is right cerebral hemisphere and this one is left cerebral hemisphere. Clear? So, the right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemispheres are divided by a deep groove in between. Now, so we can say that cerebrum contains two hemispheres. Cerebrum contains two hemispheres which is split by a central fissure. This groove is called central fissure. This groove, this deep groove or the central fissure has a specific name which is called which is called interhemispheric fissure which is called interhemispheric fissure so we can say that the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere are split by interhemispheric fissure. Now this interhemispheric fissure is also known as is also known as medial longitudinal fissure. 
मीडियल लॉन्गी चुडिनल फिशर सो इज इट क्लियर अप टू दिस वट वी है ब्रेन हैज मेनली थ्री पार्ट द ब्रेन इज ब्रॉडली डिवाइडेड इंटू थ्री पार्ट वट आर द थ्री पार्ट नंबर वन इज सेम नंबर टू इज सेम एंड नंबर थ्री इज ब्रेन स्टेम न ब्रेन स्टेम वट आर द थ्री पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन स्टेम द थ्री पार्ट ऑफ ब्रेन स्टेम आर मिड ब्रेन पॉन्स एंड मेडाला ऑबलांगाटा सो मिड ब्रेन पॉन्स एंड मेडाला ऑबलांगाटा मेक्स द ब्रेन स्टेम सो out of the three parts first i will be discussing about cerebrum and cerebrum is the uppermost and largest part of the brain which is highly developed part of the brain this cerebrum is highly developed part of the brain now if we see cerebrum cerebrum is divided into two halves one is right half another one is less left half cerebrum is divided into two halves one is right half another one is left half and each half each half are called hemispheres so the right half is called right cerebral hemisphere whereas the left half is called left cerebral cerebral hemisphere and these right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemispheres are divided by a deep groove or the central fissure this deep groove or the central fissure is called interhemispheric fissure this deep groove or the central fissure is called interhemispheric fissure interhemispheric fissure and this interhemispheric fissure is also known as medial longitudinal fissure hope i can make myself clear to all of you now these two cerebral hemispheres that is right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere are connected to each other by a bundle of white matter called corpus callosum where i will write let me write it in the second page so if this is the cerebrum and this one is what is what is this group called this group is called interhemispheric fissure this group is called interhemispheric fissure the other name is medial longitudinal fissure and this one is right cerebral hemisphere and this one is left cerebral hemisphere now this right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemispheres are connected to each other by a bundle of white matter by a bundle of white matter which is called corpus callosum corpus callosum let me write it down so that you can remember this the two cerebral hemispheres are connected to each other by a bundle of white matter called corpus callosum so the two hemispheres are connected by corpus callosum the two hemispheres of the cerebrum are connected by corpus callosum now here we have come across a terminology which is called white matter now we will frequently come across two terms one is gray matter gray matter and another one is white matter now what are the basic differences between gray matter and white matter the gray matter mainly consists consists of neuronal cell bodies so this gray matter mainly consists of consists of neuronal cell bodies whereas the white matter mainly consists of myelinated axons so this white matter mainly consists of myelinated axons and these are white in color which are white in color which are white in color 
so these are called white matter we have already learned that in a nerve cell dendrons and dendrites this is the this is the nucleus this is the cell body the gray matter mainly consists of neuronal cell bodies the gray matter mainly consists of neuronal cell bodies and what is this this is axon covered by myelin sheath clear this is axon covered by myelin sheath so white matter mainly consists of the myelinated axons so these are axons and these are dendrons dendrites dendrons and dendrites and this is cell body we have already learned this this is nucleus you have already learned this so gray matter mainly consists of neuronal cell bodies the gray matter mainly consists of neuronal cell bodies whereas white matter mainly consists of myelinated axons so the cerebral hemispheres are connected to each other by bundle of white matter that means the bundle of myelinated axons over here which is called this this connection is called corpus callosum so the two hemispheres of the cerebrum that is the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemispheres are connected by corpus callosum and this corpus callosum is a bundle of white matter this corpus callosum is this corpus callosum is a bundle bundle of white matter is it clear is it clear now the surface of the cerebral hemispheres the surface of the cerebral hemispheres are highly folded the surface of the cerebral hemispheres are highly folded and has many grooves and ridges so let me write it down where i will write let me move on to the next page the surface of the cerebral hemispheres are highly folded and has many grooves and ridges the grooves are called sulci or in singular it is called sulcus whereas the ridges are called gyri in singular it is called gyrus so if these are the folded part of the cerebral hemispheres these are called this part are called gyrus this is in singular in plural it is gyri so if we put together all these these are gyri and a single part is called gyrus similarly this part this part is called sulcus in singular it is called in singular it is sulcus in plural it is called sulci so the surface of the cerebral hemispheres are highly folded and has many grooves and ridges the grooves are called the grooves are called sulci so these are grooves these are grooves and the ridges are called and the ridges are called gyri so this this is a ridge the ridges are called gyri this is gyrus all put together forms the gyri this is sulcus all put all put together forms sulci so let me write it down the surface of the cerebral hemispheres is highly folded and has many grooves 
and as many groups this one and as many groups and ridges these are ridges these are ridges the groups are called groups are called sulky or in singular it is called sulcus in plural it is sulky in singular it is sulcus whereas the ridges are called ridges are called gyri in singular it is called gyrus in singular it is gyrus in plural it is gyri now the groups and ridges why why there are so many groups and ridges the groups and ridges increase the surface area of the cereb cerebrum these groups and ridges increase the surface area of the cerebrum thereby accommodate a large number of neurons thereby accommodate a large number of neurons to accommodate the large number of neurons there are groups and ridges which increase the surface area of the cerebrum so let me write it down these groups and ridges increase the increase the surface area of the cerebrum actually i am writing in capital letter because you can see my handwriting is fantastic my handwriting is fantastic so that it will be very difficult for you to understand my handwriting if i write in small letter is it fantastic really fantastic <laughs> hope you can understand what i want to mean however these groups and ridges increase the surface area of the cerebrum thereby accommodate a large number neurons actually my handwriting is not very good that that's why I, i intentionally prefer to write in block letters in capital letters because if i write in small letters you will not understand so let us have a small revision what we have learned the surface of the cerebral hemispheres the surface of the cerebral hemispheres is highly folded and has many groups and ridges and has many groups and ridges the groups are called sulci the groups are called sulci and in singular it is called sulcus whereas the ridges the ridges are called gyri and the singular is called gyrus now these groups and ridges increase the surface area of the cerebrum thereby accommodate a large number of neurons this is the reason why the surface of the cerebral hemispheres are highly folded what is the reason for this cerebral hemispheres to be highly folded to increase the surface area of the cerebrum to increase the surface area of the cerebrum what will happen if the surface area of the cerebrum will be increased what will happen if the surface area of the cerebrum is increased it will accommodate a large number of neurons it will it accommodates accommodates a large number of neurons and that is why the surface area of the cerebrum is highly folded now the outer layer 
द आउटर लेयर ऑफ द न्यूरोनल टिश्यू ऑफ द सेरेब्रम इज कॉल्ड सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स लेट मी राइट इट डाउन द आउटर लेयर ओ अगेन आई एम राइटिंग इन स्मॉल लेटर एट टाइम्स आई माई सेल्फ डोंट अंडरस्टैंड माई हैंड राइटिंग लेट मी राइट इन ब्लॉक लेटर द आउटर लेयर ऑफ न्यूरल टिश्यू ऑफ द सरेब्रम इज कॉल्ड सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स इट इज द मोस्ट इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द सेरेब्रम द आउटर मोस्ट न्यूरल लेयर इफ दिस इज द सेरेब्रम द आउटर मोस्ट लेयर इज द न्यूरल लेयर द आउटर मोस्ट लेयर इज द न्यूरल लेयर एंड दिज न्यूरल लेयर दर इज द लेयर ऑफ द न्यूरल टिश्यू ऑफ द सेरेब्रम इज कॉल्ड सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स सो वट इज सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स द outer layer of neural tissue of the cerebrum is called cerebral cortex and this cerebral cortex is formed by gray matter this cerebral cortex is formed by gray matter now what is gray matter you have already discussed what is gray matter gray matter mainly consist of neuronal cell bodies gray matter mainly consist of consist of neuronal cell bodies and what are white matter white matter mainly consists of myelinated axons which are white in color so the cerebral cortex that is the outer layer of the neural tissue of the cerebrum is formed by gray matter which is called cerebral cortex now the two cerebral hemispheres what you have seen the right and the left cerebral hemispheres the two cerebral hemispheres are connected to each other by a bundle of white matter and what is this white matter called this white matter called is corpus callosum we have already discussed this is corpus callosum which is a bundle of white matter white matter and white matter means which mainly consists of myelinated axons whereas the cerebral cortex whereas the cerebral cortex is mainly formed by gray matter and gray matter means which mainly consists of neuronal cell bodies is this clear is this clear now say me one thing while discussing about cerebral cortex i want to mention a important thing that do you feel that we are conscious about every sensations suppose if i touch you you are conscious of the sensation that there is a sensation of touch but do you feel the sensation of the blood pressure no you don't feel the sensation of blood pressure but if i touch you you feel the sensation why because until and unless the sensation reach the cerebral cortex we are not conscious about that sensation so we can feel only that senses which reach the cerebral cortex if the sensation does not reach the cerebral cortex we will not feel that sensation we will be, we will be not conscious about that sensation as for example the sensation of blood pressure does not reach the cerebral cortex so we don't feel the sensation of blood pressure similarly if the peristalsis is not too fast then do you feel the sensation of peristalsis no because if the peristaltic movement is not very fast or too fast the sensation of peristalsis does not reach the cerebral cortex therefore you are not conscious about that sensation but if i touch you immediately what will happen the sensation of touch will reach the cerebral cortex and you will be conscious about that sensation so 
whether we are conscious about the sensation or we are not concerned about the sensation depends on the cerebral cortex. This is the important function of the cerebral cortex. So, cerebral cortex of cerebrum is concerned with the consciousness of sensation. So, we can write it down. Cerebral cortex of cerebrum is concerned with the consciousness of sensation. This is very important function of the cerebral cortex. So, the cerebral cortex is concerned with the consciousness of sensation. Is it clear? Now, the cerebral hemispheres, the, cere the cerebral hemispheres are covered by membranous covering called meninges. They are covered by a membranous covering which, which, which is called meninges. So, cerebral, cerebral hemispheres are covered by membranous covering called meninges. So, meninges cover the cerebral hemispheres. So, the cerebral hemispheres are covered by meninges. Now, now each cerebral hemisphere, each cerebral hemisphere contains cavity within it called lateral ventricle. These cavities are called lateral ventricle. Ventricles rather I will say. Because each cerebral hemisphere, each cerebral hemispheres Each cerebral hemisphere contains cavity called lateral ventricle. So that there are two lateral ventricles, there are two lateral ventricles in the cerebrum. There are two lateral ventricles in the cerebral. One is left lateral ventricle and another one is right lateral ventricle. One is left lateral ventricle in the left cerebral hemisphere and another one is right lateral ventricle in the right cerebral hemispheres. So there are two lateral ventricles in the cerebr cerebrum. These are the two largest ventricles of the brain. These lateral ventricles are the two largest ventricles of the brain. So, I should write it down so that you will not forget. What should I write? Let me take another shift. So, what we have learned? There are two lateral lateral ventricles. in the cerebrum one is called left lateral ventricle which lies one one is left lateral ventricle which lies lies in left cerebral hemisphere And another one is right lateral ventricle. Right lateral ventricle which lies within right cerebral hemisphere. Hemisphere. Now, these, these 
lateral ventricles that is left lateral ventricle and la right lateral ventricles are the two largest these are the two largest largest ventricles of the brain ventricles of the brain now the more we study about the brain we will find more other ventricles are also found in the brain we will find more other ventricles are also found in the brain now among the ventricles this left lateral ventricle and right lateral ventricles are the two largest ventricles of the brain so i think this is clear to all of you now these ventricles are nothing but cavities these ventricles are nothing but cavities and what does it contain these cavities or the or these ventricles contains cerebrospinal fluid so these lateral ventricles ventricles contain contain cerebrospinal fluid what is csf csf is cerebrospinal fluid cerebro spinal fluid now cerebrospinal fluid now what we have to learn now that various divisions of the cerebral hemispheres now each cerebral hemispheres has each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces three surfaces four borders four lobes and three poles i will not go into very details of this because i will discuss i will restrict my communication up to that what is needed for your standard okay so each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces four borders four lobes and three poles now what are the three surfaces the three surfaces are superolateral surface superolateral surface number 1 number 2 is medial surface medial surface number 3 is inferior surface inferior surface now what are the three surfaces of cerebral hemisphere each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces they are superolateral surface medial surface and inferior surface similarly each cerebral hemisphere has four borders what are those number 1 is superior border superior border number 2 is inferolateral border infero lateral border number 3 is medial orbital border medial orbital border and number 4 is medial occipital border medial occipital border now each cerebral hemisphere has four lobes what are the four lobes the four lobes are frontal lobe frontal lobe number 2 is parietal lobe
parietal lobe number 3 is occipital lobe and number 4 is temporal lobe before we go about the poles let me draw a diagram how how are the various lobes placed if this is the cerebrum i am not a very good artist you have to adjust somehow if this is the cerebrum this part is called frontal lobe frontal lobe this part is called frontal lobe this part is called temporal lobe this part is called parietal lobe and this part is called occipital lobe so what we have seen what are the four lobes that are present in each cerebral hemisphere they are frontal lobe parietal lobe uh, occipital lobe and temporal lobe is it clear now now what are the various poles that are present in each cerebral hemisphere so each cerebral hemisphere has three poles what do we mean by poles poles means pointed ends pointed ends so the three poles are frontal pole frontal pole number 2 is occipital pole occipital pole and number 3 is temporal pole temporal pole so what we have seen we have seen that each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces four borders four lobes and three poles poles means pointed ends three pointed ends or three poles now the three surfaces are superior lateral surface medial surface and inferior surface now each cerebral hemisphere has four borders they are superior border inferior lateral border medial orbital border and medial occipital border each cerebral hemispheres has four lobes they are frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe and each cerebral hemispheres has three poles they are frontal pole occipital pole and temporal pole now i'll be discussing in a very not cell in a in very short about each of them now what are the various surfaces of the cerebral hemispheres let me write it down so each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces each cerebral hemispheres each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces what are those number 1 is superolateral surface supero lateral surface and these surface surfaces convex in nature this surface is convex in nature number 2 is medial surface medial surface and this surface is flat and completely vertical so this surface is flat and completely vertical now the last one is inferior surface infer 
rear surface which is irregular which is irregular now this inferior surface this inferior surface is divided into two parts this inferior surface is divided into two parts one is called inferior part and another one is called posterior part so the inferior surface has an inferior part interior part sorry interior part and another one is posterior part posterior part so the inferior surface has two parts one is interior part and another one is posterior part this interior part is also called orbital surface this interior part is also called orbital surface orbital surface and the posterior part the posterior part is called tentorial surface tentorial surface so its cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces they are superolateral surface medial surface and inferior surface the superolateral surface is convex in nature the medial surface is flat and completely vertical whereas the inferior surface is irregular and the inferior surface has two parts one is called interior part and another one is called posterior part the interior part is called orbital surface whereas the posterior part is called the tentorial surface now i'll be discussing about the borders of the cerebral hemisphere and i'll be discussing definitely in a very not cell now let us discuss about the borders of the cerebral hemisphere here is no page i have to take another page now what are the borders of the cerebral hemisphere now each cerebral hemisphere has four borders we have already discussed each cerebral hemispheres has four borders now what are the four borders that are present in each cerebral hemisphere number 1 is superior border superior border number 2 is inferolateral border infero lateral border number 3 is medial orbital border medial orbital border and number 4 is medial occipital border now this superior border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface this superior border separates supero lateral surface from medial surface so here we have seen that superolateral surface and here we have seen medial surface here we have we had seen superolateral surface and here we had seen medial surface so the superior border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface clear so this is the this is you have to learn only up to this you don't have to go into the details of each border the superior border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface now what the inferolateral border does infer inferolateral border separates 
superolateral surface from inferior surface separates supero lateral surface from inferior surface so this is superolateral surface and this one is inferior surface so the inferolateral border inferolateral border separates the superolateral surface from the inferior surface whereas the superior border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface clear the superior border separates the superolateral surface from the medial surface whereas the inferolateral border separates the superolateral surface from the inferior surface now there are other two borders also they are medial orbital border one among them is medial orbital border now this medial orbital border separates medial surface from the orbital surface so medial orbital border separates medial surface from orbit orbital surface so medial orbital border separates medial surface from orbital surface if we go on to the previous page this is medial surface and this one was orbital surface so the medial orbital border separates medial surface from the orbital surface what i have said the medial orbital border separates the medial surface from the orbital surface similarly we have another border called medial occipital border which separates the medial surface from the tentorial surface the medial occipital border separates medial surface from the tentorial surface so let me write it down the last one remaining was medial occipital border so medial occipital border separates medial surface medial surface from tentorial surface so the medial occipital border medial occipital border separates the medial surface from the tentorial surface so each cerebral hemispheres each cerebral hemisphere has four borders superior border in inferolateral border medial orbital border and medial occipital border and hope this is clear to you now i'll be discussing about the various lobes of cerebral hemispheres so let us have to take a next page. no we can move on to the other side of the page so what are the various lobes of the cerebral hemispheres each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes of unequal size of unequal size so the lobes are not equal in size each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes so how many lobes are there in the cerebrum there are in total eight lobes four lobes four lobes in the right right cerebral hemisphere and four lobes in the left cerebral hemispheres so in total there are eight lobes so each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes and what are the four lobes we have discussed let me draw the picture again this is the cerebrum
this this part is called frontal lobe frontal lobe let me confess that i am not a very good artist so we have to adjust somehow this is temporal lobe temporal lobe this one is parietal lobe and this one is occipital lobe if you remember we have already discussed about this now the frontal lobe occupies almost 41% of the total cerebral volume the frontal lobe occupies almost 41% of the total cerebral volume let me write it down the frontal lobe occupies almost 41% of the total cerebral volume the temporal lobe occupies almost 21% of the total cerebral volume the temporal lobe occupies almost 21% of the total cerebral volume now the parietal lobe parietal lobe occupies almost 19% of the total cerebral volume so parietal lobe occupies almost 19% of the total cerebral volume whereas the occipital lobe occupies almost 18% of the total cerebral volume so the uh, occipital lobe occupies almost 18% of the total cerebral volume so what we can conclude from all this that most of the volume is occupied by the frontal lobe which is as high as almost 41% and the minimum volume is occupied by the occipital lobe which is almost 18% so the frontal lobe occupies almost 41% of the total cerebral volume the temporal lobe occupies almost 21% of the total cerebral volume the parietal lobe occupies almost 19% of the total cerebral volume and the occipital lobe occupies almost 18% of the total cerebral volume now i'll be discussing about the various poles of the cerebral hemisphere so i have to take another page now each cerebral hemisphere has three poles we are almost at the end of the discussion today after uh, discussing about the poles of the cerebral hemisphere i will directly go into the functions so we will com we'll complete about the cerebrum now each cerebral hemisphere is cerebral hemisphere has three poles what i had said what do you mean by poles poles means pointed ends pointed ends so what are the three poles that are present in each cerebral hemisphere they are frontal pole frontal pole number 2 is occipital pole and number 3 is temporal pole temporal pole now what is frontal pole the frontal pole is the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere so it is the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere so frontal pole is the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere what is occipital pole 
occipital pole is the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere so if this is the cerebral hemisphere so here is the frontal pole it is on the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere here is here is the frontal lobe here is the frontal lobe so here is the frontal pole and the occipital pole here is the occipital region a occipital lobe so here is the occipital pole so occipital pole is the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere it is the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere it is the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere which is called frontal pole and this is the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere which is called occipital pole so occipital pole is the posterior end posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere now what is temporal pole temporal pole is the anterior end of temporal lobe where was the temporal lobe here was the temporal lobe so temporal pole is the anterior end of temporal lobe so we have discussed almost everything about cerebrum now i will be going directly into the functions of cerebrum let us move on to the other side of the page in a fresh page i will write functions now what we have discussed while we are discussing about the cerebral cortex we have already discussed that cerebral cortex is concerned with the consciousness of sensation hope you remember so we can write that cerebral cortex of the cerebrum is concerned with the consciousness of sensation consciousness of sensation sensation now hope you remember what examples i had given if i touch you you will feel the sensation of touch why because the sensation reach your cerebral cortex but the sensation which do not reach the cerebral cortex we are not conscious about that sensation what example i had given the example of blood pressure the sensation of blood pressure does not reach the cerebral cortex so we are not conscious about the sensation of blood pressure clear now cerebrum is the center for perceiving pain sound touch temperature taste and smell so let me write it down cerebrum is the center for perceiving pain sound touch temperature test and smell moreover cerebrum is the center of intelligence and memory it controls mental activities like thinking and reasoning so let me write it down again cerebrum is the center of intelligence and memory it controls mental activities mental 
मेंटल एक्टिविटीज लाइक थिंकिंग एंड रीजनिंग so when whenever we are doing mathematics which part of the brain is involved it is cerebrum because it controls the mental activities like thinking and reasoning and the another important function of cerebrum is that the cerebrum controls all voluntary actions of the body so cerebrum controls all voluntary actions actions of the body what do we mean by voluntary actions voluntary actions means those actions which are controlled by our will which are controlled by our will and what are involuntary actions involuntary actions are those actions which we cannot control which is not under the control of our will but cerebrum controls all voluntary actions which are under the control of our will so let us have a revision what are the functions of cerebrum cerebral cortex of the cerebrum is concerned with the consciousness of sensation number 2 cerebrum is the center for perceiving pain sound touch temperature taste and smell number 3 cerebrum is the center of intelligence and memory it controls mental activities like thinking and reasoning so whenever we are doing maths cerebrum is involved cerebrum controls all voluntary actions of the body so this is all about cerebrum in your standard you don't have to go into the further details of cerebrum this is enough and more than enough for your standard